Hi, I'm Bracken. Uh, I don't live in Portland, but you're all great. Um, just, when I signed up, I thought there was going to be lots of extra time, so I'm sorry, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about open education. It has nothing to do with anything here, but it's my particular world of nerddom and programming, so I like it. Uh, we talked a lot about of openness in, in uh, the programming world. Um, uh, open source software, all of us use it every single day. Ruby, Rails, so many things. Um, uh, and I, th I think we get that, um, and it's awesome. There's open standards. Uh, we are able to do all of our things because of open standards. HTTP, JSON, XML, stuff like that. You know, all of our tools are built on top of that and allow us to share things with each other. Um, there's a thing in the world that a lot of people don't really know about. It's called open education. Open ed education means lots of things. There's pedagogy, so it's styles of teaching and interacting with the students and the learners um, that are, you know, different ways to do it other than just getting up here and preaching something about biology, right? Um, there's there's all, all sorts of really cool things. I'm going to talk about a specific thing within open education. Um, education at its core is sharing. Um, I like to share. Openness is sharing. Um, I had some other cool point to talk about this, but I forgot it. <laughs> Did you know in Pokemon Yellow, special <laughs> that allowed capturing, training, battling, and tr trading. I was trying to read up there, that totally fell. But you could trade Pokemon with other humans. Whoa! Like, that's sharing and something. <laughs> I, I never got Pokemon, that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so the particular world of open education I'm talking about is called open educational resources. And basically what this is, is open source course content. Um, there's lots of really cool knowledge out there in the world. And you know, when you go to court class and you have to buy a hundred fifty dollar textbook to get that, that's really, that really sucks. Um, and so this is a world of making open source content to share with everybody, and it's super awesome and cool. Um, and it's not even just about saving money; um, it's about sharing the knowledge of the world. And I think coming from an open source software world, a lot of us get that and understand that. Um, there's a lot of great examples out there. MIT released this open courseware stuff, you know, over a decade ago, and they have lots of really awesome content. Uh, there's this high school in Utah that they use only open educational resources, and they, when they create new stuff, they share that as well. It's super awesome. There's this thing in Utah called Open Textbook Project. This is a good example that's not just about saving money. Um, these schools, they use these open uh, math books, and because the content was free, they just printed them for $5 for each of the high school students. Um, and they noticed, for the most case, for the most part, they were just as effective as all the, the fancy publisher ones. So it's awesome, right? Like they're just as effective and they're five bucks a pop. But some teachers did special cool things, right? They actually used to change the way they taught. Um, and in one case, like they noticed like this course, this one class, like all the students were like 20% better on all the tests. And they're like, oh, why is it? That's really weird. What it is is that the whole class started, they took tons and tons of notes in their books. And if you remember in my high school, we should return the book at the end of the year so that Poor kids the next year could use the same book, right? Um, so we weren't allowed to t touch those things. We had to wrap them in like concrete, you know, to not harm them. <laughs> and so, like, because of the, the type of resources, you know, they were allowed to take as many notes as they want they could, and the students that really helped them, you know, it's just this little thing helped change and improve the actual outcomes of the students. And um, so it's not just about money; it's about actually improving stuff. And um, that's just a great example of that. Um, in the open source world, you have great people like Richard Stallman, who might argue something's not actually open when it's an MIT license, you know, instead of uh, GPL. Yeah. Um, this is kind of the, the thing in the open educational resources world. You need to be able to reuse it, revise it, remix it, uh, redistribute it, and retain it in a semester. You know, you know, we all sold our textbooks back because we wanted to get the money back. Or a lot of times now, instead of getting textbooks, you pay 30 bucks a month to access the content in a semester or a course, it's gone and you don't have it anymore. And you can't learn from it, you know, you have to, you know, that sucks. And so for open educated resources, all this has to reply, apply. Um, and that's just kind of cool. Uh, so what, I don't really have a point. Um, I just love this stuff. Um, I'm lucky enough that I just got it, I just switched jobs and I'm working around this stuff. And it's super exciting to me because this is cool, uh, world changing stuff potentially. Um, just like open source software is, and uh, there's really cool stuff, and I have more stuff to talk about. If you want to talk to me about it, I'll stop because it's like...